The Russian army found itself in a stalemate after the armed forces of Ukraine began conducting a defensive operation in the border area of the aggressor country. It is impossible to make up for the large losses of the Russian occupation forces, and the Kremlin is afraid of a large mobilization. Therefore, in the Kursk region, they decided to plug the holes with conscripts, and now they are throwing wounded occupiers into the meat storms, essentially to slaughter. Oboz Revitel media outlet says this. According to Russian analyst Anatoly Nesmian, Russia no longer has the resources to solve two problems simultaneously, advancing in Donbass and defending the Kursk region and other border regions. There are two possible options, to stop the offensive and transfer forces to the Kursk region or to carry out a large-scale mobilization of everything that is left. In fact, it will most likely not be possible to carry out a mobilization of civilians, this will cause very serious social unrest and it is not clear how the control system is capable of coping with this task, he wrote on his Telegram channel. He emphasized that there are a large number of security forces in the Russian Federation, but the Kremlin will not use them in Kursk region or in other border regions. They are needed precisely inside Russia since the main enemy of the regime, the people, is not going anywhere. And if necessary, they will need to be brought into submission by someone. Therefore, the maneuver of the force resource is extremely limited. Putin's foot soldiers from one North Caucasian Republic cannot be used either. They have their own task. They are the personal reserve of the commander-in-chief in case of a repeat of Prigozhin's mutiny. Suddenly, one of his comrades goes crazy. True, Prigozhin's mutiny made it clear that there is no special hope for the foot soldiers. In such a case, they can get stuck in a traffic jam and not arrive on time. But there are no others anyway, the analyst explained. In his opinion, therefore, everything will remain as it is and the Kursk region will no longer be returned by force. The regime will only try to prevent even more from being seized. Oboz Revitel says that thus the Russian army found itself in a vicious circle. Large losses in the combat zone in Ukraine and now also in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation led to a severe shortage of personnel and there is practically no one to replenish it. According to a Ukrainian armed forces officer who is taking part in the Kursk operation, this is why the Kremlin gave the go-ahead to plug the holes with conscripts. However, they will not change the situation. Conscripts cannot and do not want to fight. They were not prepared for this. Moreover, they were promised not to send them to war. Some obey orders and try something, but it is useless. The others surrender, and this is their only chance to save their lives, the Ukrainian defender told. Meanwhile, the command of the Russian occupiers began to throw the wounded and even the disabled into the meat assaults in the combat zone in Ukraine and in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation. Information about this began to gradually leak out onto the internet. Despite the claims of Russian propaganda that everything is under control, the residents of the aggressor country no longer believe in this. Putin's army does not have enough bags for the bodies of its soldiers. Either there are too many of them or the Russian Defense Ministry has decided not to spend money on this attribute for transporting home the bodies of its soldiers who died in Ukraine. As reported by the Telegram channel Chelyabinsk of the Future, the widow of the deceased occupier Chelyabinsk volunteer Anna Deryabina announced a collection for the purchase of bags. As scary as it is to write about this, we need bags for the bodies of our soldiers to transport the dead guys. We need a lot. The cost of one is 200 rubles. The reality, unfortunately, is that the guys buy them at their own expense, she wrote. A day later, Derya Bina reported the closure of the collection. According to the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, the irretrievable losses of the Russian army in Ukraine exceeded 612,000 people. As reported, the command of the Russian army continues to throw people to the slaughter, trying to capture the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces at any cost. The Russian army's offensive is resulting in heavy losses and the repeat of the experience of World War II in its worst manifestation since the command of the Russian armed forces does not value the lives of soldiers and is ready to throw them to the slaughter en masse. At the same time, the Russian command does not learn from its mistakes and does not even try to do so. According to Russian military personnel, the rank and file of the commanders are only interested in awards and bonuses. 
Unsurprisingly, the Russian general staff overwhelmingly focuses its recruitment efforts on several impoverished, non-ethnic Russian regions on the racist rationale that the nationalists concerned presumably value high salaries more than life. A number of protests in such places as Dagestan and Buryatia suggest that some natives are aware of being singled out for death, but the numbers of protesters appear to be small. Most Russians presumably serve in the armed forces because they believe they have to. If you're called up and fail to report, a whole slew of painful sanctions awaits you. Unwilling to place themselves under the immediate risk of definitely being jailed, they choose the more distant risk of possibly being killed. Perhaps the gods will smile on them. Perhaps the war will end. There's another less reassuring explanation for the Russian willingness to take a beating. They may be used to being terrorized by their leaders and consider blind obedience to unjust oppression to be perfectly normal. Supporters of this view generally point to Russian history, much of which reads like a never-ending story of elite crime and popular punishment.